Welcome to the next phase of the Toyotron electric motorbike project. Today I'm going to walk you through this wiring diagram that represents what I'm hoping is the final state of everything that I want to happen electrically inside the bike. I'm going to walk you through each part of it, all the components, all the wires, the kind of boot up sequence, and we'll see if it makes sense and is going to work the way that I need it to. Looks a little complicated right now. It wasn't that easy to draw, but we're just thinking of each of these little boxes has a job. Think of them like little Lego blocks, and we're going to connect the Lego blocks up with some wires, and then we have a working motorbike. So, let's start. The key component to any electric vehicle is the battery pack, and that's what we've got in this little box right here. Currently, it's a 60 volt lead acid battery pack. I'll be upgrading that probably to a 72 volt lithium ion battery pack in the future, but I'm just going to stick with the pack we have today. And our goal is to get power flowing from the battery pack to the motor controller. The motor controller's job is to receive the throttle input from the driver and flow power into the motor in exactly the way the motor needs it to operate properly. There's lots of kinds of motors in the world and you need the controller that's designed to make it go. This particular motor is a brushless DC motor so it has three wires delivering power and it also has uh, sensor wires coming back from the motor giving the position of the shaft as it spins around. The motor controller takes the position data, the throttle signal, and the power coming from the battery and spins the motor. So the key circuit in the bike is going to be from the pack to the motor controller and then back around again. So let's kind of trace that circuit out and figure out what all the parts are. The first box we come to is the circuit breaker, and this is existing in the bike today. It looks just like the circuit breaker you have in your AC panel box at home, and it is a manual cutoff switch uh, to break the high power circuit from the battery pack to the controller. This is kind of hidden under the seat. You have to know it's there, you have to know the correct position to put it in for the bike to work. So first thing we do is we turn on the circuit breaker, but we're still stopped. We can't get our power going any further around. The next key component, no pun intended, is the key. This is existing in the motorbike as all bikes do, and what it does is it allows power to flow from the battery through this blue box back down to ground and through the battery again. So we now have an, a, a mini 60 volt circuit going in this direction. And this box right here is an existing device in the bike that converts 60 volts coming in to 12 volts going out. It's called a DC to DC converter. I'm replacing the original one with one that can handle higher power. The original was 5 amps and it wasn't um, delivering enough power to the bike to run the my new LED headlights, plus it's got some other power uh, requirements. So I'm upgrading it to a 15 amp device. So the key allows power to flow in this direction, 60 volts comes in and 12 volts comes out. So let's look at the place that the 12 volts goes to. And we're gonna jump over here to the JEVQ. The JEVQ is the Generalized Electric Vehicle Control Unit. It is an open source hardware and open source software device from EVTV that is designed to be the computer that runs your electric vehicle should you choose to build one at home. Being a computer based on uh, an Arduino, it needs 12 volts power, just like any electronic device does. So when the key switch goes, 12 volts gets delivered to the JEVQ and it boots up. The This little uh, pin on the side is called the enable pin. I'm just directly wiring it to 12 volts, which says you are always enabled. Don't worry about that. 
Um, some people could choose to use this as a, a safety interlock. Say if you've got a charging plug plugged into your car, you don't want to drive away with the plug still attached. And I know some people who have done this. It's kind of like filling your petrol car up with gas at the gas station and driving away with the nozzle still in the gas filler. It's a bad thing. It's physically impossible for me to drive away because of the the charger in my bike. So I'm just hard coding this to be enabled all the time. Now, as the JevCube boots up, the first thing it does in software is it sets this pin right here to ground. So internally it's connecting this pin to ground. This pin we're calling the pre-charge relay signal and what it does is it runs ground over to the pre-charge relay. The previous video you saw me build the circuit for the pre-charge relay and build a 3D printed enclosure for it and also include that big power resistor. So these two components are in the same little box. By connecting the pre-charge relay signal to ground we're now um, completing a circuit from 12 volts to ground. That closes the connection in the pre-charge relay and allows power to flow through it in this direction. So now what we have is a circuit that goes through the pre-charge relay through the the positive bus bar which you saw me work on in a previous video now we're delivering power to the controller and the circuit completes by coming all the way around here and we're back to the battery pack now the pre-charge relay has an important function the motor controller internally has uh, some electrical devices built in called capacitors. A capacitor's job is to soak in power and then release it again as needed. The capacitors in the motor controller, if I just connected the battery pack directly to it, would suck in power at such a rate that we would have a huge shock of the system with power flowing into here as the capacitors fill up and then become happy. So to, to lessen that shock, we're using a pre-charge relay with this power resistor to slowly deliver power to the controller over the course of three or four or five seconds, depending on how my testing works out. That allows the capacitors to slowly fill up the same way you would a glass of water. By carefully controlling the tap on your sink, you can fill your glass up with water. You don't want to stick it in front of a fire hose because that's too much power too soon and it makes a big mess. So with the pre-charge relay switched on, we're now flowing power in this direction and we now have a happy and booted up motor controller ready to drive. After those few seconds, the software in the JevQ connects this pin to ground the main contactor pin. The main contactor pin going to ground completes that circuit and connects the main contactor contacts. That allows power to flow directly through from the battery to the motor controller with nothing in the way. Uh, by effectively doing this, because this the pre-charge relay circuit has some resistance to it, the electrons will go in the least resistance manner. They're finding the best circuit to flow through. So they'll only go in this direction. They will no longer flow through here. So this is effectively taken out of the circuit. And we now have our full battery to controller circuit and the bike is ready to drive. The rider twists the throttle and off we go. So that's pretty straightforward using a couple of relays and the computer we have a happy motor controller and we're driving down the road but that's only half of why I'm putting the JevQ into this bike it was working fine before I planned to put a computer into it a couple of the benefits of the JevQ come from its monitoring circuits in an electrical electric vehicle we want to be able to monitor volts and amps uh, in the main battery circuit. This tells us 
exactly how much power is flowing through the system. We measure voltage with the JEVQ by having a wire on the 60 volt bus bar at the top and we have a low signal wired to the 60 volt ground bus bar at the bottom. So the JEVQ through these two pins is always measuring the voltage in the system. And it doesn't stay at exactly 60 volts as you might expect. During charging it might go to 64 volts, 66 volts. Uh, when it's stopped, hopefully it'll be around 60 volts. As I'm riding at 5 kilometers an hour, it might be drawing, or it might dip down a little bit to 58 volts. And as I really slam the throttle, the, the voltage could go down to 40 or 30 or 20 volts. And this is due to the nature of the chemistry of lead acid batteries. They have a tremendous voltage sag under high power. So I want to be able to monitor that, and the JEVQ does that for me. The other thing I want to be able to monitor is the amount of current flowing through the system. And the JEVQ does that through this device called the shunt. The shunt, and I'll put a picture up, is simply a piece of metal which is very carefully machined to have a very, very specific resistance. Uh, by having a specific resistance, the JEVQ reads the value of the voltage drop across that resistance and it converts the voltage drop into a current reading because it knows the resistance of the shunt. And we enter that as a parameter to the JEVQ's settings pages. So now the JEVQ is not only controlling features, it's monitoring. It's monitoring voltage and current by monitoring voltage and current, I now can derive power in watts, or thousands of watts is a kilowatt. And so I can measure how much power is flowing through my system in kilowatts. Now, as I'm driving down the road, time is passing. And as time passes for kilowatts, you start calculating kilowatt hours. And that is energy coming out of my battery pack in kilowatt hour, fractions of kilowatt hours. By monitoring that over time, I can see the charge leaving my battery pack and going through the controller to the motor to be lost to the gods of heat and friction and work. By calculating these values and sending them to the app I'm writing on the Android tablet, I can tell the rider how much charge is left in this battery pack, both in terms of percentage of charge and in terms of distance remaining on the pack through some fairly straightforward calculations with a, a bit of a smoothing function. So you watch over time to see how the rider is, is on this ride and you, you give an indication of how much charge is left. This is the key feature of driving an electric vehicle. It's like your gas gauge in a petrol car, this gauge showing percentage of charge and distance remaining is like the gas gauge for an electric vehicle. And that is the primary reason why I'm writing this app and I'm using the JEVQ and incorporating all of this stuff into the bike. Okay, so we now have a fully functioning power system in the bike controlled by the JEVQ monitored by the JEVQ, and I'm sending data from the JEVQ to my Android app over Bluetooth. So everything's good. Now there's a couple of things left to mention, things I'm adding to the bike. The first is a camera system with two cameras, a little one on the front and a little one on the back, and this needs 12 volts power to run it. So I'm running power from the front fairing area where the camera electronics are mounted back through the bike to another DC to DC converter that I bought which is specifically dedicated for the devices in the front fairing. Uh, it's a 10 amp uh, device which is more than enough for the cameras and the other thing up in the front fairing area is the Android tablet which will be wired to a USB plug and the USB plug comes out of a 12 volt to USB conversion device 
which I'm also picking up power from this DC to DC converter. Uh, because I don't want to rely on the charge of the battery in the tablet. I want it to run for hours, so I will be powering it constantly. From As a side effect of having the battery pack, it's also driving the tablet, keeping it charged up. So now we, we've walked through every component in the system. We know what they do. They know how power flows. They know the boot-up sequence of the bike. They understand the switches and the relays. Uh, we understand how data is getting to the tablet. So I think uh, we're pretty much done. The next step will be to update my hardware breadboard and test all this out. I now have a 60 volt DC power supply that I ordered from China and it will simulate the battery pack uh, as I test the system. Uh, so I don't have to have the bike in pieces in my room every time I want to do any testing. So, next step, update the breadboard and actually start physically testing things out. So, that'll be coming up next.